What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue working on my drum project where we're basically going to be using the Oculus Quest 2, the Oculus Pass-Through API and also the Telodrum which I showed you in previous videos. I'm going to be adding support to a new controller type which is going to be hand tracking. We're going to be able to use our left hand to basically initiate the SDK on the Telodrum and then our right hand we're going to be using either for taking off for landing the drone or applying an emergency just in case we crash a drone. So I'm gonna show you how to implement that in Unity. So let's jump into it and start working on it. We're gonna be creating a new scene that it's going to inherit from what we already did on the previous video, which is basically created a, a pass through with the stats on the drone. We can see you know, what's happening with the drone at all times. We also have a logger here that show us different inputs and, and, and signals that we're sending to the drone and also whether the drone is offline or online. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to be adding a new controller. In, in this scene, we can only support the controllers, which in our case are the Oculus Quest 2 controllers. But what if we wanted to control the drone by using our hands, right? So what if we wanted to use what I call the hand core actions, which we're going to be using basically a pinch to activate it. That means that we're going to be taking off the drone by just using a pinch. We're going to be landing the drone by using a different finger and also doing a pinch gesture. And then we're going to be activating emergency by using a different finger and also using a pinch gesture. So we're going to have to look at a way to support hand tracking with this implementation. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone the scene that we already have for the Oculus. So I'm going to call this Oculus drone client and then we can just say hand tracking. And then just go ahead and double click on it. I'm also going to go to file and make sure that we add this scene because we're going to be pushing this scene to the actual device. And then if you expand the OVR camera rig and also the left hand anchor and also the right hand anchor, currently we don't really have any hand tracking support right now in this, in basically in this scene. We're going to be adding that and that it's going to be adding by going into Oculus, sample framework, core, hand interactions. And then if you go into prefabs, you're going to see that we have multiple free prefabs in here and, and also materials. So this is going to be some of the materials that we're going to be assigning to our hand. So actually these are going to be the materials, the hands we're going to be getting from the VR folder and then prefabs. And there's going to be an OVR hand prefab that we're going to be adding. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it inside the left hand anchor. And I'm just going to go ahead and clone that and just basically paste it inside of this one right here. That way we have one for the left hand and also one for the right hand. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be doing different gestures with our hand left hand and also different gestures with our right hand. So the left hand is already set on, most of the settings are already set. There's one thing that Oculus doesn't support right now and because we're using pass-through, we're using the OpenXR backend, hand tracking is with meshing is currently not supported and it's supported but it, it has a lot of issues so I don't recommend that you use it right now. So what I'm going to do is going to be go, go ahead and selecting these two and we're going to be just using the OVR skeleton render. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and also the OVR mesh here. We're going to be just go ahead and uncheck it and we don't need to do, we're not going to be using meshing on hand. So that's basically what we're doing there. And then the next thing that I need to do is we need to be assigning materials. And if we go here into hand interaction materials, I'm going to go ahead and assign the default hand material to the OVR. A prefab and also for the right hand. So if we go into it, you should have a material associated. And I keep that, I did that just when meshing comes into play that it's going to have that material. So if we look at the OVR skeleton render, we're going to be assigning the system gesture material here. And I'm also going to be doing the same thing on the other ones. So let's go ahead and do that. I could have probably just do one and then just clone it, but that's fine. We can go and do this one. So skeleton material is going to be the system gesture and material, actually it's gonna be the skeleton bone material. Let me make sure that I assign that correctly. And then I'm gonna to have to change on this one all the, you know, from hand left to right hand. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm going to do that here. Make sure that I do that here. And I think I have everything else already, already set. So this should be good. Let me just make sure that everything looks fine. And because we're not going to be using the OVR mesh render, we don't really need to assign anything in here. If you want just to get it ready for when meshing is supported, you can go in here and then basically assign the materials if you like. I'm not going to do that for now. Just let's just leave it like that. And then make sure that you assign the skeleton material on the on the OVR skeleton render for the left hand. And everything here should be good. So I have that. 
We're not gonna be using physics, so I don't need to use the capsule material here. And then I think everything, everything looks looks good. And yep, so so that's everything that we need to do as far as like what we need to add on this component. Make sure that the position is, is 000 on, on both of them, which it should, but sometimes when you add it to different components, it inherits different positions. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do there. So now what we need to do is let's go ahead and go into scripts. And we're gonna be looking at one, the implementation, which basically is gonna allow us to do hand, hand tracking. So we're gonna to have to change a couple of things and I'm gonna go into my drone constants. These are two constants that I'm gonna be using quite a bit and I, and I call them pinch down and also pinch release. What this means uh, is that we're gonna be detecting a pinch down or, with our hands. So we're gonna be calculating what is the distance between our thumb finger and also any one of our fingers, depending on what gesture we want to capture. So what, what this is gonna do is gonna say, okay, once I hit the, a distance between this finger and this finger, that is 0.01, then I know that I'm pitching down. But if I were to release it at 0.03, it's basically gonna know that we are releasing. So that, that's what these two constants are gonna be for. So we're gonna have to create a new enum in here to determine what kind of controller we're gonna be supporting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one the enum drone controller type. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we're gonna have three different controller types. One of them is gonna be a standalone. The other one is going to be just controllers. This means that it's going to be for uh, basically the Oculus controllers. And then we're also going to have hands, which is what we're gonna be adding today. So now that we have that added, let's go ahead and jump into the actual drone controller. We're gonna be doing a couple of, some, some work in here. So the first thing is we're gonna be adding a new, a new variable. This is gonna be the drone controller type, which basically we just added. And I'm just gonna call it controller type. We're gonna be basically setting this to standalone by default. And that way we can specify, you know, what kind of controller we're gonna be using for, for this drone controller, you know, through the inspector. So we can have that, and I'm also gonna be making this on singleton because we're gonna to have to get some information from here from another class. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one a singleton and then drone controller. Go ahead and bring that in space. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding a reference to our hand. So I'm just gonna do and access that by using the other hand. It's gonna be left hand, and we can just go ahead and clone that. And we can just do the same thing for our right hand. So the other thing that I need as well is gonna be actually the bone information. And we're gonna get, get that from the OVR skeleton. So I'm gonna say left hand skeleton, and we can just clone or copy that as well for our, our right hand. And then another thing that I, that I also like to do is we're gonna be making these ones public. So I'm just gonna say left, basically adding properties for it. So we're gonna just say left hand and then add, a, add a, pu a public property for that. So I'm just gonna do get, and then we'll just return the left hand. And then I can just basically copy this whole thing. I know there's better ways to do this by just right clicking and refactoring, but I just like to type it in so that you know what I'm doing. So I'll just do, if I can type, there you go, right hand, and then right hand in here. And then I'll do the exact same thing for the OVR skeleton. So we just add properties for that. So I can just do left hand skeleton, and we can just do right hand skeleton. And then make sure that you access that left hand skeleton, and then right hand skeleton. And then we'll just change the, the actual types in here. So it's gonna be OVR skeleton, and then we'll just do the same thing. We're gonna need this information for another class, so that's why I am typing those out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move these ones up because I want these private variables to be uh, coming in next because we're gonna be needing, basically I want them close to, to what we're doing on the on the update method. I wanna be descriptive of how I call them. So I'm just gonna do, go ahead and do a bool. And this is gonna be hand left. And I'm gonna call this one index pinch. So this one is gonna detect whether I'm pinching with my hand, my hand left. And basically you'll see in the index and doing a pinch. So it's gonna be a Boolean, so this is gonna be set to true as soon as I'm pinching, and then it's gonna be set into false as soon as I let go of the pinch. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this, and I also need a couple of more here. So this one is going to be the right. Uh, actually, it's gonna be left, but it's gonna be a different finger, so it's gonna do the middle finger. Make sure that I do a pinch there. Then on the right hand, we're gonna have a different set, so I'm just gonna do right, and then right, 
and then also right in here. Except I'm gonna be using different fingers in here. Well, this is gonna be for the right hand index pinch. This one is going to be the middle. And then this one is going to be my ring finger. So basically we have actions that we're gonna be doing with our left hand. And we also have actions that we're going to be doing with the right hand. And make sure that you type these things correctly. So it's really complicated to explain it and type at the same time. So if I make mistakes, I apologize, but I promise that this is gonna be all right as soon as you look at it in GitHub. Okay, so we need to know, if we look at the controller typing here, I actually gonna rename this. Let me call this one drone, and it needs, to, it needs to be lowercase. So I'm gonna do a drone controller type just to keep the, the, the C-sharp standards. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, if the controller type is a standalone controller, then I'm gonna return. The reason for that is because I don't support digital just joysticks, so we don't support, just right now, support digital joysticks. So we're just gonna return if that happens. If, let's say we have a different controller type, we still wanna support the, the actual controller commands, so we're gonna keep this information as it is, but we're gonna be doing a, a different checking here. So it's gonna say if controller type is equal equal to controllers, then we're gonna leave this intact, right? This is what we used to do. This is what we do for the controllers, but if we're using hand tracking, then in that case, we can just do else if, and then we can be explicit in here and say, okay, if we're using our hands, this is what we're going to be doing, which I'm gonna have to go, like, I have to get back to this because we're gonna have to implement this. So. I'm just gonna say to do implement uh, mappings. And it's basically you know, handling the mappings that we're gonna be adding to the drone action mappings so that we can do, we can start detecting what we're doing with our hands. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I'm gonna go into drone action mappings. And this class is a little scary and it's because there's a lot of stuff going on in here. But if you look at this class, this is basically what handles you know, what has all the information about what we're going to be doing either with the controller or what we're going to be doing with our hands. So right now we're only supporting, if you look at this, we have movement input bindings. And this is basically, I'm gonna rename this to be controller, movement input bindings. The reason for that is because it's very specific to the to a controller, right? Like you can see the OVR input bind, that's basically an input that happens on the controller. So I'm also going to be renaming this one. These are gonna be core actions, but this is gonna be controller core actions. And if we go back into drone controller, you're gonna see that everything it's going to be, it, I did refactoring, so it just, you know, re, it's using the new, the new names for these classes. So what I need to do though, is we need to implement a new way to handle a core actions. So right now we're just using the controller, but we need to use our hands. So how do we do that? So let's go ahead and go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna be implementing something a little bit different. It's gonna be similar, but no, as we're not gonna be using any of this information. So the first thing that we need to do is, okay, we're gonna be basically, you know, taking off with the drone, but I wanna take off with a specific finger. So we need to detect, we basically need to pass in the hand information. So I'm gonna say OVR hand, and then I wanna know which hand we are passing this core action from. And I also need to know the skeleton information. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I wanna know which bone we're going to be executing the action for. So I'm gonna say, okay, what is the bone ID? The next thing that I'm gonna need to know is what is going to be the minimum value when we're gonna be start detecting the pinch down. So for that, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be a flow mean pinch down. And don't worry about the, the errors below. I'm trying not to cough because I, I had a cough. But anyway, so it's gonna be minimum, and we're gonna say max pinch down. And I think I actually call that one max, uh, max pinch release. And the next thing that I need to know is, I also need to keep track of whether I'm pinching or not, and that's going to be the value that I'm passing in, which is the Boolean value. So I wanna know if I'm still pinching down or if I'm releasing, that way I can, I can tell the, the caller you know, if I'm still pinching or if I'm releasing. So that it's going to be accomplished by just passing in a ref of a bull, which is gonna be called, in my case, pinch down. And then last, I'm gonna use my favorite thing, which is params. And I'm gonna say a list of params. Basically, it's gonna be a list of actions that we can execute whenever we're detecting the, the pinch with our fingers. And I'm just gonna call it, this is gonna be called callbacks. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove all these because it's gonna be a lot different. 
So the first thing that I want to do though, is I want to know, okay, I want to make sure that what I'm passing, the instances of, of these, of the hands are actually being initiated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, hand controller, remember we did a singleton and I'm going to say left hand. If this one is equal to no, I want to make sure that I tell the, the user that they haven't really associated or hand, the hands, the, the hands to, the, to the controller. So that's an issue. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we want to let them know that is happening. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to do an or here and I'm going to also do the same thing with our right hand. So I can just say if it equals equal no, then we can just go ahead and log an error. For now, I'm just going to make sure that they have the, you know, both of them associated. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's going to throw an error. So I'm just going to say, we can just throw an error here. And then we're going to say hands are currently not associated in the drone controller. So the, the way this is going to work, if you were to map, if you were to call this handle corrections with hands and you don't have these associated, we're going to throw an error. And this is so to prevent it so that you don't do something incorrectly. So we're going to do that and then we can do return. Okay, now that we need some error handling, we need to detect, you know, okay, what is the hand that we're currently mapping to? So I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, give me the skeleton, hand skeleton, and I'm going to detect, okay, which is the hand that I'm currently mapping to? Is it the left hand or is it the right hand? So this is so that I can get the, the right instance of the skeleton. So it's going to say if it's the, you know, if I'm, if I'm basically doing a, an action on the, on the left hand, then I'm going to make sure that I get the skeleton for that left hand. That's basically what this is doing. So I'm going to say, okay, drone controller instance, and then we're going to say left hand skeleton. And then I'll just do the same thing for the, for the, well, if, if it's not the left, it's obviously going to be the right. So I'm just going to say drone controller instances and then right hand skeleton. So it's going to give me the right skeleton based on the mapping that I'm currently executing. Now that we have the hand skeleton, we can now calculate the thumb tip position. So to do that, we're going to say thumb tip equal, and I know the hand skeleton, so I know whether it's the left or the right. So I need to know, okay, what are the bones? And I'm going to say, I'm going to use link to do this single or default. And then we can just be bringing that in. And I'm just going to say be doing a, a little link in here. And then I'm going to say be the ID. So it's going to, it's basically going to do a search on all the bones where the ID, it's going to be the ID that I'm passing in. So make sure that I do bone ID. And then actually what I'm going to do here, this is going to be the thumb. So make sure that I add the thumb position. So this one is going to be hand thumb tip. So this, this, this one is always going to be the same, right? This is not the one that I'm passing in. This one is going to be the thumb tip. So I'm going to say, okay, give me the position of this, but then depending on the mapping, I'm going to tell it, okay, what, what difference do I want to calculate basically to calculate the distance between each one of the fingers. So I know the thumb tip is here. So I know that that's going to be this enum. And then the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to say, okay, now that I have that set, I need to basically get the finger that the, that we're trying to map to. So I'm just going to say, we're going to call it hand finger. We're going to say finger. I think finger is completely fine. So I'm just going to, I'm going to say hand skeleton, same thing. And in this case, I do want to do sync color default and we can just also do what we did above it. Let's do our, our link in here and then make sure that I'm basically now getting the bone ID that I'm passing in. So this is now going to give me the finger that they're trying, we're trying to map to on the core action. So we got the thumb tip, we got the finger. So now how do we do the calculations? So let's make sure that we, we did get those fingers. So I'm just going to say thumb tip is not equal to no and finger is not equal to no. Just to make sure that we don't get any, any errors or any exceptions. Okay. So how do we calculate this? So there's, there's many ways to do this. And, and in fact, OpenXR, if it wasn't for OpenXR not working with gestures, you could do something like current hand, get finger is pinching, which is part of the framework. And they do all the calculations for you. So because that's currently not supported, I'm not going to be using that. I think if I do hand and then is finger, let me make sure. Oh, okay. So you would need to pass in the actual OVR hand. And then based on the OVR hand, you can, you basically, you can do something like this. So you can say instance, and then remember that I have the left hand and then you can say pinch, get finger pinching. 
and there's other things that you can do and then you can tell it what kind of finger but OpenXR doesn't support it just yet so I'm just going to calculate it myself if and then we're gonna say okay vector 3 we're gonna be getting the distance and then remember we want to start with the actual thumb tip so I'm just gonna say I have that thumb tip game object or bone so now what we need to do is we need to pass it in the transform and then I'm actually going to be passing in the position. So then I need to know, okay, what distance I'm gonna be calculating from the thumb tip. So I'm just gonna say, well, this is the finger that I want to do the calculation on, and I'm gonna also do the position. So, so it's gonna allow us to get a flow value of the distance between these two fingers, but that doesn't really solve the whole issue. I wanna know if this value, if whether we're pinching down or not. So you go, I'm gonna do less than or equal to the minimum pinch down. So it's gonna be minimum pinch down. And then as long as I'm currently not pinching down. So this is gonna allow us to detect, okay, are we are going to start pinching down or are we releasing pinch down? And I'm gonna say that we're currently pinching down. So as soon as we're pinching down, I want to execute every single one of the callbacks. So I'm just gonna say for each, and I'm gonna say callback in callbacks. And then we can, we can just say call back and then make sure that it is not no. And then just go ahead and invoke it. So if we're pinching down, we're gonna say this to true. I'm gonna be executing every single action that we currently have. So the other check that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an else if, and I wanna make sure that I am releasing, right? So if we're currently pinching down and or vector distance, so this is what we're gonna be detecting whether we are currently releasing. So we need to use that, that, larger, that larger number. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the vector three distance. We're basically gonna go ahead and copy. We can just copy this whole thing and do exactly what we just did, except that the values in here are gonna be different. So it's gonna do the greater than or equal to, and I wanna make sure that I am using the minimum pinch, the minimum pinch release. So make sure that I have, which is the one that I had in here. There we go. So I think actually this one used to be, needs to be called minimum pinch release because it's the minimum value before we start detecting uh, release. Okay, so we can just go ahead and do that here. And let me make sure that I see, I check whether, why we have an error here. So we're doing a pinch down, we're then calculating the distance between these two fingers. And then if we get the, if we get the, oh, I see. Make sure that you do the greater than or equal to. Okay, so as soon as we do that, then we can do now pinch down equal false. And you can do some logging in here if you if you wanted to do that. So that this is what it's going to allow us to handle the different actions for our, our hands. So we're basically just doing an overload to do that. So how do we make this work? Well, we're gonna have to do a lot of mappings in here. So if you notice, we have the movement here for the controller. We're, we're not gonna be implementing movement just yet on this video, but I want to implement the core actions for the hands. So, what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna be a new set of mappings. And then I'll just go ahead and do this. But this one, we're gonna call it the hand core action input binding. So we can just do hand core, and, and it's gonna basically be most of, everything is gonna be most of the same. But how does this work? Well, the way that this works is, the reason why I made also this one action ref bool is because the bool that I wanna pass in is going to be updated on the color. So the, the bool value is gonna be a reference, uh, a value that gets changed based on a reference. So there's gonna be a couple actions in here and this is how it works. So if I want an action to be mapped, basically when I'm, when I'm, when I'm pinching with my right hand finger. So in this case, I'm, well actually in this case, I'm using my left hand and then I'm, I have to specify which finger I'm going to be using. So I'm gonna be using the index finger. So this is cool because I can say, okay, how do I start the drone action connect? Well, I, I can start it by basically mapping to my handle core action. I can specify which hand we're gonna be using and in this hand. So if I wanted to use the right hand, I can basically just change this setting here. And then it's going to allow me to change that pretty quickly. And then I can tell it, okay, what finger I want to do that with. So it's gonna be this. So what this is gonna do is gonna allow me to connect to the drone by doing this. I also need to specify what the minimum finger pinch down value is and also what the, mac, what the actual release value is. I keep calling this one max and min for some reason, but you know what I'm talking about. And then the actual rest value, ref value that we're gonna be basically changing, which is our bull, to detect whether we are, we, we are holding down or we're releasing. And then this is gonna be the action that we're gonna be executing, which you're probably familiar with. If you look at my previous video, we're gonna be starting the drone. 
So what if we wanted to initialize the SDK? Well, we can use a different finger. In this case, it's gonna be the middle finger, so I'm gonna be doing this. And if you notice in here, I'm using the exact same structure. I'm passing in a ref. I'm handling the core action, which is the overload. It's gonna be my left hand, the middle tip finger, then these two values. We could even put those values in here if you didn't want to pass it in. I mean, it's really up to you. On this case, it's going to be sending the, the control command and then start the, the stats. So this is basically how you initialize the SDK. If you wanna take off, in this case, it's gonna be also a control command, but we're gonna be, the command is actually going to be take off. That means that the drone is going to be taking off. And we're gonna be using the right hand in this case and using the index tip to basically take off. So we're gonna be doing this. So we're gonna be connecting, we're gonna be initializing the SDK, we're going to be taking off, we're gonna be landing, and we're gonna be doing the rain finger to actually execute an emergency. So this is really cool because it allows us to, to expand it by just making changes to the drone action mappings without actually doing a lot of coding, which we did a lot of coding by getting things correct. So with our mappings, we can now do something like this, which is what, we, what you see above it. We can say instance, and then remember, we now have control mappings. So we can just say, okay, now that we have that, we can say, okay, I want to, I want to basically access a dictionary for the action that allows us to connect to the drone. And then we can also specify, okay, if, when we're connecting, we wanna know if we're pinching, right? So remember, this is gonna be the action that we're gonna be using for, for actually connecting to the drone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do ref and then basically passing that in. And we can just go ahead and clone this as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and clone it again. And then the next one is gonna be initializing the SDK. It's gonna be a different finger, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pass that in. Okay, so now that we have that, I wanna make sure that I still do what we did here. I wanna make sure that we don't allow somebody to take off if we haven't really connected to the drone or initialized the SDK. So I'm gonna do the same check in there. And then let me go ahead and copy one of these. We're gonna have a couple of more here. Because remember, we're gonna, we're gonna be basically taking off. So we can take off. We're also going to be doing a landing. And we're also going to be calling emergency. But I also need to pass in the different, basically the different ones in here. So my right index P in pinch, it's going to be the one that is gonna allow us to, to actually uh, take off. This one is going to be the middle, middle finger on my right hand, it's gonna be the one for landing. And then emergency is going to be is going to be this. So this just allows me to keep track of the state of the pinch. So that's what how this one it's going to work. So I think that's most of the coding that we need to do here, unless I miss something. But if I miss something, I'll make sure to cover it on the next video. But if we go back in here, we're gonna have to now map the the hands on the actual controller for this scene. So if you remember, we went in the controller and we added a couple of hands in here. So the left hand is gonna be assigned to the left hand, and then the right hand is going to be assigned to the right hand. And that's going to be on the drone controller. Remember, this one is not a standalone, this one is going to be hands. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So now if we go back to the other scene, we're gonna have to fix the other scene too, because the other scene currently is gonna set to standalone because my controller enum was, is new. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one. Actually, it's gonna be controllers, because this one is gonna be a handle with the, the actual controller on the on the drone. And then this, is, this, this one's gonna be nulls because we're not really using left hand or right hand when we're using a controller. And then the last thing that I also want you to keep in mind, if you go to Oculus, make sure that you have controller and hands set to true, otherwise it's no, hand, hand tracking is not gonna work. So let's also check and make sure that the, the hand tracking is set up correctly on the OVR camera rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this component on the hand tracking scene. And it uses that scriptable object, so I would imagine that this is also set correctly. Make sure that my experimental features are enabled and pass through is enabled. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.